Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose of it remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And the scripture right here in verse 14. Let's look at verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 we're going to read to 15. It says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Now, look in the verses. You see the terminology spirit. And you see spiritual. So we want to take a look at spiritual. What it means to be spiritual in today's society. And also, as we move further on in the study, we'll also look at what does it mean to be religious. When we talk about the spirit, then you talk about spirituality, you talk about spiritual, you talk about spiritism. Now, many people today, you hear they go around and they'll say that they're spiritual. And that is totally different from what it is in the Bible. I remember I was speaking to a guy once and uh, I asked him, I don't remember what the conversation was, but it, it, along the line, if he, he believed in God and he was just, he was just emphasizing that, no, he's spiritual. So I'm just, I, I was confused back then. I was like, how can you be spiritual and you're not believing in God? But he just kept reinforcing that he was spiritual. And so today, when someone say that they are spiritual, it's not that they are usually giving credence unto God. But rather, they are giving credence to other things. A lot of times, they may be talking about a supernatural force. They may be talking about nature. They may be talking about rituals. They may be talking about... Spells, meditation, they may practice divination, they may again cast spells, they may believe in themselves as an author and finisher of their faith. There may be even people who believe in the true and living God, but sometimes they may believe in a little ancient spirituality and practice that a spiritual person sometimes depends on the type of spirituality or the times of there are the type of spiritual person that they are they may value animals and planets they may they may rec recognize certain forces of nature but not the true and living God. But when the Bible or the Holy Scriptures speak of one that it is spiritual, it is very clear. There must be a relationship with the true and living God. When the Bible speaks about one that it who is spiritual, that person is totally different from what the world considers as spiritual. Because a spiritual man of the world may believe once again in omens. They may be believing in rituals, ancient spirituality. They may believe in certain meditation activities. They may believe in certain planets. They may believe in certain forces. They may gather in the morning and rub two stones together and tell you to say, hum. They may do those things and that's spiritual for them. But the person who is spiritual according to scripture must have a relationship with God. What do you mean? 
Look at the portion of scripture in John chapter 4 and verse 24. It says, God is a spirit. And, and God is a spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. And a translation will say, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, worship in spirit and in truth, the place of worship is irrelevant. Because if you are to worship according to the scriptures, because or if you are to hold fast to spirituality according to the scriptures, you must recognize God as the true spirit, because he is the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit. And if you are to worship him, or if you are to have an affiliation due to his spirituality, then it must be true, meaning true to his very nature. His very nature is holiness. Be holy for I am holy. The person that is spiritual, according to the scripture, they are endowed with certain activity. He who is spiritual, he who is spiritual judges all things because he is receiving Revelation from the Holy Spirit. Now, again, there must be that relationship between God and man. For that person to be spiritual. And that person, that person who is spiritual, even people who do not belong to God, can know that it's a different form of spirituality. They know that it's a different form of spirituality. For example, when Joseph, when Joseph was cast into prison, and uh, when Potiphar's wife wrongly accused him, and after he was vindicated and he was brought before Pharaoh, look at look at uh, Genesis forty-four, Genesis forty-four, and look at verse thirty-eight. It says, and Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this man in whom is the spirit of God? Even people who do not recognize the true and living God will be able to see that your spirituality is different from those who practice omens and those who practice ancient spirituality, etc., etc. Because you are totally different. Because your affiliation is with the Holy Spirit. So not every time you hear someone say that they are spiritual, it means that there is an affiliation with the Holy Spirit. Because a one that is spiritual can be holding allegiance to certain forces of darkness, all in allegiance to animal, all in allegiance to something different from the true and living God. So do not hear someone declare that they are spiritual and you run and say, oh yeah, he's a spiritual man. Yeah, he can be a spiritual man. That is the reason you call some of these people spiritists. Not because of any affiliation with God, but because their affiliation with supernatural force or natures and rituals, etc., etc. Now, when we speak about spiritual, you must understand this. There must be a relationship between God, or listen to this, or any being that is endowed, or, or meaning any being that God provided such attributes. For example, angels. That's the reason when we speak about the supernatural force, we're talking about people who align themselves even with fallen angels or, or people who want to worship, worship so, uh, a supernatural forces, fallen angels. And when I say endure with the Holy Spirit, because God has given the angels certain attributes that is different from man. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. In this instance, it's talking about right here the angels. You see, God is a spirit and any association with him, any association with him, any association with him will cause you to be the spiritual person.
Once again, you go over to John chapter 4 and verse 34 and 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So in accordance to that, you realize that your, your affiliation with God will make you spiritual. Yes, indeed. That is true spirituality. And I'll show you later when we speak about angels because God has given the angels certain, certain, certain attributes. And so because they are not human beings, they are spiritual beings. And so, yes, they can be spiritual beings. But not all angels are equal because you have some fallen angels. So true worshipers then must worship God in spirit and in true. Meaning true worshipers... They are not going to divert from what is true. They are going to recognize God as the authority. They are going to recognize God as the source of holiness. You must worship him. You must worship God in accordance to his true nature, which is holiness. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So this is the first thing you must understand. If you are going to worship, it must be worshiping God. You do not worship the angels because a true worshiper does not worship the angel. The true worshiper worship God because he is the spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. And because he is the Holy Spirit, your affiliation with him makes you spiritual. So your spirituality is from the real source. Now, you may have a form of spirituality, but that is not from the real source. And so that's the reason some people go after certain other spiritual forces. People may invoke God in their doing and invoke God in their way of life, but they're really not spiritual. They're really not, they're really not, they're, they, well, they're spiritual, but they're not spiritual or, and have no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because someone can go forth and they can decide that, you know what? I do not like what this Holy Spirit is saying to me. I do not want to wait to see what is going to happen next. I'm going to a palm reader. I'm going to consult someone else. I'm going to worship something else because I want it now. I can't wait. So if I do this, if I have this association with that, then I will get this. I will get certain powers. I will be able to do this. Yes, they are truly spiritual. But they are not in terms of the biblical sense because their spirituality is not to the spirit, not to the Holy Spirit. And so the scripture tells you that people, people will do such thing. Romans, Romans chapter 1 and verse 25, it says, Who exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. So people will go forth and they will do other things. Align themselves with certain forces. Rubbing up themselves on certain things. Bathing themselves in certain portion because they believe that it will give them that protection. They believe that it will bring them that good luck that they want. And so they're doing all of this understanding that it's not from the Holy Spirit. They're doing all of this. Yes, yes, they're doing it because they are aligning themselves with certain certain spiritual forces but not the holy spirit because you do not worship the angels you must worship the true and living god because what happened you have some angel i show you i show you in hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 that god provided the angel with certain attributes they are ministering spirit they work on behalf of god they do things on behalf of god they worship god they they, they surround the truth they do everything for god but some angels, so to speak, decide not to do things like that anymore. Get into their feelings. They want to challenge God and Satan himself, who was Lucifer at them. And I say, who was Lucifer? Because once he got cast out of heaven, he was no longer Lucifer. He took on the persona of the devil. And so he becomes Satan. 
So he's no longer, he, 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 he's a different being right now. He's a different being. So yes, though angels are spiritual beings, because they are not human beings, and though God gave them certain attributes that we do not have, it does not mean you are to worship them. Look at um, Revelation chapter 12. Tell you about the, the, the angels. And verse 7 it said, And war broke out in heaven, and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angel fought. Satan is talking about, but they did not prevail. Now was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. So yes, you are fallen angels, and people now seek to capitalize on that because they want that affiliation with a supernatural force. But they do not want something that is pure. They want something that will give them what they want to do. They are corrupt. And so they seek after a source. They seek after a force that no longer affiliate with God. Because the fallen angels no longer affiliate with God. The fallen angels do things. Do things because now they, 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 they have their own agenda. Their own agenda is to take their agenda is to take as many with them to hell as possible. Now, once again, once again, if you realize that before all of that, angels, angels were given authority by God to do his wills. Again, we go back to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. I just want you to see where we're coming from. Because angels could do what angels do. They could choose to honor God. They could choose to worship God. Or they chose to disobey God. And then we saw in the book of Revelation 12, 7 to 9, we saw where a set of angels along with Satan decide to rise up in heaven. Decide to fight. And so those spiritual beings were thrown out. And so when a man today declare that he is spiritual but he believes in ancient spirituality or he believes in divination or he believes in uh, he believes in magic etc etc he's not getting his source from the true and living god his spirituality comes from or is aligned with something else that is not of god not of the holy spirit and so he's going to do what he wants to do why why? Because of the evil of their heart. Because in God, everything is pure. Why? Because God is holy, the scripture says. So his characteristics is holiness. So if you're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, if you're going to be, be spiritual according to the scripture, then... You must fall in line with the characteristics of God. You must fall in line with what God wants and that is holiness. And so let me show you this now. Angels, though they may be spiritual beings, you're not supposed to worship them. They possess, they possess, they possess the power of good and evil. What do you mean, preacher? You saw... Where God, where, where, where it says right there, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? That's something good. But when they, when, they, when, they, when they get cast out of heaven, when they get cast out of heaven because of rebellion, now that is something evil. They possess both good and evil. You're saying, I do not believe it. How can an angel possess something good and evil? Because some are aligned with God. And some are not aligned with God. Now, Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Look at this. This is telling you about, about God and God's attribute and with the angels. Now listen to this. It says, it says, I'm talking about the good of the angel. We're talking about the good. No, we're saying they possess good and they, the power of good and evil. Let's look at the power of good first, right? Good. It's um, um, from 148, verse 2. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. 
Praise him, you heaven of heavens. Praise. That's something good. They are praising God. That's one of the good traits. They are praising God. Now, if you go over back, we're talking about the good traits of the angels, right? Because we're saying they possess both good and evil. Now, we're looking at the goodness, right? Now, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, it says, But when he again bring the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. To worship God is good. Angels do this. It is good, right? Now, angels do goodness again, such as instructing God's judgment. What do you mean? It speaks about this in the book of Revelations, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, I mean, I talk about instructing God's judgment. Verse 1, it says, After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, all in the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea or on any tree they instruct god's judgment they're there they were instructed to do this god want them to do this so they are obeying god they are obeying god angels do good for example angels are protectors angels are protectors they're doing this because they are under the authority of god not under the authority of the dragon now listen to this psalm psalm 34 verse 7 the angels of the lord encamps all around those who fears him uh, i mean who fear him and delivers him that is something good so we see the goodness we saw some traits they worship god they worship god they worship god they entrust god judgment and they also protect those are good traits now when we talk about the evil attributes these are not from god because i said that angels have the ability angels have the ability and they are, they are, they possess both good and evil. The good angels, you see, they worship God, they worship God, they instruct God's judgment, and they protect. Now, the fallen angels, those are the one, those are the one who have those evil traits. That is totally independent of God. What do you mean? In the book of James, James chapter 1, it tells you that God cannot be tempted, nor God does not tempt anyone. Okay, so that's that's the first thing. So angels, angels, angels are spiritual, but the ones who were against God, those were the evil ones. Those were the ones that were cast out of heaven. First, let's look at the book of Jude. We're looking at the evil, 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 evil. We look at good, good, some of the good traits. Now look at this. And um, Jude, Jude, Jude only have one chapter. So look at verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness of the judgment of that great day. Now, if they were up to good, they will not, they would not have been, they would not have been cast. So they said they did not keep their proper domain, meaning, meaning, meaning they rebel. Those who kept their proper domain, they, 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 they obey God. They, they do things on behalf of God. They protect. Those are the ones who worship. Those are the ones that instructs God's judgment. But the ones who were cast down, those are the ones that is fully endowed with evil. And so because of that, a man, that it, a man who is spiritual, he, he, he is essentially invoking the power of the fallen angels, not those of the good ones. Because you don't go and worship them. You worship God. Because they are ministering spirit. They are ministering spirit. They will bring a message, etc., etc. But the ones that are evil, the ones that are evil, they are the ones that are causing havoc in society. What do you mean, preacher? I said they are the ones that is causing havoc in society. Ephesians chapter 6, it tells you right here in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. It's talking about those angels, the angels that are causing havoc right here. So you can see your brother and your sister right there, but what you don't see, what you don't see is most often are that they are being deceived or that they are being influenced by those 
evil agents, those evil angels. And that is the reason the scripture is telling you right here, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this, against spiritual hosts. So there you go when we're talking about, uh, we're talking about the evil that they do. Now, now, man is a spiritual being. How come man is a spiritual being? Yes, we are a spiritual being. Because God himself gave us his spirit. You're saying, what do you mean, preacher? Now, let's look at it. Let's look at the scriptures. Man is a spiritual being. But if you worship man, guess what? You are not worshiping God. And so you are against God. So, yes, 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 yes. So, I mean, Job 34, Job 34, man is a spiritual being. Okay, Job 33, I'm looking at the wrong, Job 33, verse 4, it says right here, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the, the, breath of the Almighty gives me life when we were created we had the spirit of god what do you mean what do you mean all of us when we were created we had the spirit of god but the fall of man caused most of us to well all of us to go astray so we need to come back into fellowship with god through jesus christ but we still possess the spirit of god why because god gave man life genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 it says and lord god formed the form man of the dust of the ground and the breathing and breathing his nostrils and the breath meaning the spirit of life and man become a living soul mm -hmm. so we have the spirit of god within us so we are spiritual beings so so this is the reason this is the reason if we were just any old ordinary being this would not have happened when you die. When you die, when you die, guess what happened? The spirit goes back to God. You say, what? I don't believe it. You say you don't believe it. God gave you his spirit. But when you die, the spirit goes back to God. Ecclesiastes 6, chapter 12. Look at this, verse 7. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. So yes, we are spiritual in nature. That's the reason we're always, you notice this, we yearn for the creator. Some people may suppress it by saying we don't believe in God. We don't this, we don't that, we don't that. But we always yearn for the creator. They won't tell you that they're yearning for the creator. They'll do everything to suppress it. They'll do everything in their life to suppress it and to tell a lie. That we don't believe it. We don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't believe it. But the scripture says right here. Even if you don't believe it. It says right here. In the book, in, in, in the book of, of Romans chapter 1. It says verse 24. Since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen. Meaning the evidence of God is available to all mankind so i do not care what you want to say you see it you know many of us uh i'm not sure if there's a god you're an agnostic so from a biblical perspective then for us to be spiritual we must have that relationship with god why john 4 24 for god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth once again once again you can be in church and it do not make you that spiritual person in terms of biblical sense because your spirituality may be due to the source with the fallen angels your spirituality may be due to your affiliation with the sun and the moon and the stars some people still believe in astrology your spirituality may be in animals your spirituality may be linked to karma your spirituality may be due to luck your spirituality may be due to may be due to you throwing something on the ground and reading the signs like they used to do back in the day, reading the entrails to see or looking at the liver. 
That's a form of spirituality, but that has nothing to do with the true and living God. Because from a biblical perspective, for one to be spiritual, one must have an affiliation with the Holy Spirit. To worship Him in spirit and in truth. When you're in church and your affiliation is split, you're not spiritual. Because you're not true. You cannot be in church today, worshiping God, holding up your hand, but you still have your charm in your pocket. You're not true. Yes, you're spiritual. But you're not a spiritual man according to the scripture. You may, you may be in church, but you got a little piece of parchment in your, in your, in your Bible, stuck in it in a psalm, Psalm 23. That's a favorite, favorite psalm for a whole lot of people who love their charm. The Lord is my shepherd. Stuck in their parchment right there. Or your little red ribbon. Or whatever you want to put in there. Open in your, 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 your psalm, your Bible to your favorite psalm. Yeah, we used to do that back in the day when I was ignorant. Opening up my Bible, walking with a Bible in my back pocket. Thinking that is going to save me. Walk in with your little New Testament Bible in your pocket. A lot of wicked men used to do that. Going on some little robbery. I wasn't a robber, just saying. Right? Going on some little robbery with their little Bible in their back pocket. Because man, really, we are spiritual beings. <laughs> so we want some association with the Holy Spirit. Right? You sit down before you smoke your joint. You read a psalm. You read a psalm when, uh, where you ch before you do certain things, you, you, you chant a psalm. And you do that. You do that. But that does not make you right in the sight of God. Because your affiliation is not true. Yes, you're spiritual, but your affiliation is not true. You are not keeping with the nature of God. A truly spiritual person, a truly spiritual person is one that is because they recognize the truth of God. And what is the truth of God? Holiness be holy for I am holy. You can't be spiritual and you're still into charms. You can't be spiritual and you got to go to check your, to check your baba or whoever you want to check. You can't be spiritual and you're going for that bat. You can't be spiritual. Are you doing all that shenanigan, that craziness, leaving church and before you go home, you got to stop by your favorite place to get your favorite candle? Yeah, you can't do that. I remember once there was this, I think, I don't know if that pharmacy is still there in Jamaica. It was a genuine pharmacy, but they said all sort of shenanigan. You walk in that pharmacy to buy real medication, and when you walk in there, people buying all sort of oil of this, oil of that, all sort of candle of that, this, that, 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 that. So if you walk in that drugstore, <laughs> really, because you just want some Tylenol, you want something, you just want a real medication, and people see you walking out. People think you're maybe walking out with a little something. Yeah, spirituality is deeply rooted within us because we are created. We are created to be spiritual beings. But not because we are created in, to be spiritual beings, it means we have to worship or we should worship force, we should worship nature, we should have fall, uh, uh, affiliation with fallen angels. Because spiritual in the sight of God indicates things that are different from what the world declare it as to be. When you are spiritual in the sight of God, the first thing, the first thing that you must understand is that you have a new mindset. A new mindset. Because when you have a new mindset, that's when you're going to become a spiritual man and you'll be able to judge all things because now you're guided by the Holy Spirit. You're guided by the Holy Spirit. So when you are born again, if you look at John 3 verse 1 to 17, 
It tells you it it, it, it tells you of, of, of Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a religious man. He was a spiritual man. But he had no affiliation. He had no affiliation with Christ. And he went and he spoke to Christ. And they had the dialogue. And Christ said to him right here in verse 5. More sure, surely I said to you. Unless one is born of the water. And the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You must be born again in order for you to be considered a spiritual person. You must be born again. The spiritual person must be a new creation. And that and that and that spirituality is not something now that is from the world, rather it is something that is from above. It is from above. The spiritual man must 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 recognize that. No, he's not leaning on his own understanding. The spiritual man recognized that. The spiritual man recognized according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal minded is enmity against God. You can't be spiritual according to the scripture and you still hold fast to ancient spirituality. That's a form of carnal mindedness. You say, oh preacher, you want us to forget our roots. Yes. 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 Because I ask, everybody's talking about the, 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 their ancient spirituality and I ask you, which one? And that is the reason God is the only true one. Through Jesus Christ. Because even if everybody's casting spells, everybody got a different way to do it. Everybody have a different God that they're going to. And some people will challenge that person that theirs is better than this one. And so some people don't want to go to that, that, that over man anymore. Because these spells are weak. They want to go to someone who have the real deal. Someone may not want to go to that country anymore. They want to go to a different country. They may want to get a bigger ring. Or a different charm. Because that charm isn't working anymore. And so that's the reason I'm saying to you. Those spirituality are joke. Because Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. And so that's the reason God is a spirit and if you're going to worship him, you must do so in spirit and in truth. Because to be spiritual in the sight of God, to be spiritual in the sight of God, you must be born again. You cannot rely on this because you no longer have a natural mindset. What do I mean? First Corinthians chapter 2 and look at verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned because if they are going to be spiritually discern you must rely on the holy spirit to teach you and to remind you of the teaching of christ that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it is that's what it means you 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 you, you can't live and just pretend like you're just any and anybody because that's no longer the case that's no longer the case. If you declare that you are spiritual in the sight of God, it means that you take on the persona of God. For he is a spirit and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Meaning, 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 meaning it must be according to the nature of God. Amen. Not what you feel like. It's not about feelings anymore. They say feelings hurt. Feelings hurt. And so if you practice spirituality and not holiness, you're going to get hurt. Because once you are a spiritual person, according to the scripture, listen to the scriptures, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, you also as living stones are being built up a spirit 
spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So if your spirituality is true, angels, you're wrong. If it's true, animals, you're wrong. If it's true, forces of nature, you are wrong. If it's true, self, because after all, I'm a spiritual being, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. Spiritual. Spiritual affects one spirit, our soul. It affects that, not the material things around you. You may declare yourself to be spiritual, but because it's not, it's not to the true, the true and living God, it's not through affiliation with the Holy Spirit, you're just, I don't know why you are. Because you are spiritual, but yet still your spirituality is in charms again. It's in luck. It's in belief in self. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is believing in, in an animal. You see, or, 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 you may, or if you see certain things, then you like you back up. You see a black cat run across your doorway, you're not going in that house. You are not going in there. There's a black cat sitting there. I'm not going in there. Spirituality is entrenched in our society. I don't remember ever seeing a 13th floor in this country. You go in an elevator. I don't remember there's a 13th floor. There's no 13th floor. You go on an airline. There's no 13th row. There's no 13th row. Because 13 is bad luck. So spirituality is entrenched within our society. So there's no 13th floor and there's no 13th row on an aircraft. You see how far spirituality, spirituality runs? It's bad luck. I don't, think that, I don't think it's because the builders wouldn't want to put it. I just think because people are so focused, I, what do you, I'm, not, I'm not sitting in that seat. And so the airline will be flying empty, with that row empty. But put in the 13th row and make it fancy, I'll take the seat. That's right. You may declare yourself to be spiritual, but again, you do not profess belief in the true and living God. You do not profess the true and living God. A truly spiritual person, a truly spiritual person is born again. A truly spiritual person understands that there is no other way. A truly spiritual person understands that there is only one true God, one true spirit. And that's where their spirituality comes from. A truly spiritual person understands that there must be a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what a true relationship, because listen, John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why? Because he is the Son of God, the Father who is Holy Spirit. For God is a spirit. And his worshippers, or they that worship him, must worship in spirit and in truth. The spiritual man understands that there is only one way. You see, you have many people who proclaim themselves spiritual, but they consider that there are, they believe that there are many ways to heaven. They can do a lot of stuff. A lot of people, a lot of people, you see them on TV all the time, you know. You know, they're, they're just, they're more than one way and, you know, when we can get there and, you know, there's only one way to heaven. One way. And the truly spiritual man embraced this. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, for there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So there you have it. You are spiritual, you're a spiritual being, 
But not because you declare yourself spiritual, it means that you're right with God. Very powerful, very profound. And so next week we will look at what it means to be religious. Amen? Amen. Amen.